trying to get a five in AP Chem, these are the phrases and words you do not want to include on your FRQs. So let's get started with like dissolves like. That just makes me go, Ugh. yeah, I can help you remember what's going on, but you need to use these words instead. So water and methanol are both going to be polar substances. Therefore, they are going to be miscible in one another. Yes, that means that they will be soluble in each other. They will dissolve in each other. However, you don't want to say like dissolves like. Like what? right? What are you describing? Talk about the interactions between those polar molecules. Discuss what's actually happening in solution. And going on to number two, this one is similar to like dissolves like. Opposites attract. Yes, again, it is true, but opposite what? You have to give be very specific when you're answering, the, answering those FRQs. All right, what should you say instead? Focus on those electrostatic forces, right? You have a positively charged proton and negatively charged electron. They are going to experience forces of attraction. And you can then talk about Coulomb's law, talk about Coulombic attraction. This idea that the distance between the charges is going to impact that attractive or repulsive force. And then also the magnitude of those charges. Coulombic attraction, mention it as many times as possible. Phosphorus has a larger atomic radius because it's to the left of chlorine. <laughs> Don't do this. I want to mention the arrows associated with periodic trends. Again, this was a great tool to help you remember what these trends are, but I want you actually describing the trend. And arrows, don't mention arrows when it comes to equilibrium and talking about the forward versus reverse reaction. Just don't include arrows. What you want to do instead is start with the atomic radius trend. As protons are added to the nucleus, as we are moving across a period, the effective nuclear charge increases. This means that the magnitude of positive charge in the nucleus increases, and therefore the electrons are more attracted to that nucleus. As the electrons are attracted to the nucleus, the size of the atomic radius decreases. And why do you want to start with atomic radius? Because all of the other trends tie back into that. The smaller the radius, the greater the Coulombic attraction, and therefore the higher the ionization energy or the energy needed to remove an electron. Next up, it dissolves, it reacts. What is it? Again, be specific. Just tell me what it means. Are we talking about a solution of sodium hydroxide or molecules of carbon monoxide? Two very different things. Just be specific. And when it comes to being specific, be really careful with particles. Saying the molecules of sodium chloride is going to make your reader just cringe. Sodium chloride doesn't have molecules. It has formula units. So let's just review the types of particles really quickly because this is a little nuance that a lot of students miss. If we're talking atoms, we're just looking at a single element. Molecules, we're looking at things that have covalent bonds. Um, so molecules of water. Versus formula units, you're talking about an ionic substance. If you don't know how to refer to that substance, call it a particle. A particle is the overarching small unit of matter and it will work. All right, when it comes to concentration, concentration is not equal to moles. It's not a little m. It's not just regular parentheses. Make sure you are referring to concentration in terms of the molarity. When we're using the molarity, we're using square brackets to indicate that. And then molarity is the moles of solute per liters of solution. Molarity is not equivalent to moles. Again, it's the moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. Also be careful, molarity, we use a capital M, not a lowercase m. And it's TDF, bro, because of that positive entr. No. Do you have any idea what I was just talking about? Yeah, positive entropy will be thermodynamically favorable. But is your reader going to know that? If you need to use abbreviations, you have to define them at the beginning of each question. And this is because the test is graded on a question-by-question -question basis. I promise all of the readers are AP teachers who want you to pass but help us help you, okay? Um, there are some common abbreviations. You can see those there. Some readers will even allow for like an increase with an upwards arrow, decrease with a downwards arrow, but it's always easy just to write out the word. Just be careful. Make sure you're defining it so everyone can figure it out. Also, when it comes to that, make sure you are taking the time to actually write legibly. It makes such a big difference. I know, I know. You have to take the time to do that so we can read what you are writing. And whether you're feeling completely cooked or like this is light work, your reader doesn't need to know that. You always want to go for partial credit. You're going to answer every single MCQ and you're going to try for the portions of the FRQs. If there's a part where you have no idea how to do part A, but you can answer part C, error carries forward. What do I mean by that? I mean, you can say, assuming the molarity is 2.5 molar, 
blah, 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 blah. And then you can still get full credit for that portion. So yes, while it is tempting to feel like I'm just gonna create this beautiful doodle and I love to see it, just uh, not on your AP chemistry exam. You have paid good money for this exam. You've put a lot of work into this test. Don't waste it, right? Give it your best shot. You might surprise yourself. I am still new here on YouTube, so I need you to help me reach more students. Please interact with this video if you can, share it with your AP Chem besties, and know that I am gonna be hosting a last chance review on May 4th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. You've got this.